This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 16th, 2015. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, what we're going to deal with today is we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into um, the, uh, the Windows Explorer. In other words, your file system. Um, how to manipulate it. Uh, I know that uh, we've done this a couple of times in the past, but always, you know, in the following couple of weeks, I get questions again about this and that and the other thing about File Explorer. Um, in the newer system of Windows 10, um, you're back to having uh, a place where you can get at all of your files on your computer. Uh, in Windows 8, that was not the case. It was sort of a uh, catch, as, catch can. It was, it was often difficult to find where you wanted to be in uh, in the Windows Explorer. Now when I say Windows Explorer, what I'm really talking about is this window here. Uh, in Windows 10, it looks a little different than Windows 7, um, but the fact is, is that this panel allows you to find all of your files. If, you, if you've lost something, if you've lost something, <laughs> this is where you go searching for it. What panel is it? This is Windows Explorer, and in this case, I, I have opened up the pictures uh, folder because uh, we're going to, I'm just going to use that folder to show you how to manipulate files inside of a folder, because there's lots of them there. What did you click on to get that? All right. Uh, there are two ways to go here, and we'll, we'll start right from there. What did you click on to get to a Windows Explorer that's going to show you where all your stuff is? If you have your, your, uh, your owner folder on your desktop, as I do, some don't, but I have it on my desktop, Bob Williams, there it is, uh, you can open that with a double click, and that will open all of the files that belong to you, okay? The, the files that are your contacts, uh, your desktop, um, any folders you have on the desktop, your documents folder, downloads, everything is there, okay? That's your, um, that's your folder that the computer set up when you said, I'm me, I'm the owner, I'm the user, this is my name, whatever. It sets up that folder and you're able to go in and get everything there. Now. Uh, one other thing that you can do uh, with the Windows Explorer is you can use, in Windows 10 it's called this PC or my computer or whatever, but when you open that, uh, it, grow, it allows you to see, in fact, the root directory of the computer. And when I say root directory, what I'm really saying is it allows you to see drive letter C. Or if you have a, uh, a thumb drive plugged in, it allows you to see drive letter whatever thumb drive is. Okay? But it allows you to see, in this case, local drive C. And that's the root directory of your computer. Now, if we click on that, uh, you'll know, in this case, you'll notice that it has um, all another arrangement of folders here for quick access. It's, you can still see your desktop, your documents, downloads, blah, blah, blah. They're all there. But in this case, we're going to have a look at drive letter C. And it opens up, when you double click on it, the root directory of your, of your computer. And when I say root directory, what I'm really saying is the, um, where everything resides in, in, on the hard drive space. Okay, where everything resides, including 
your user folders. We'll go to them in a minute. But you can see here that I've got all kinds of other folders here. Um, I've, I've got uh, a OneDrive temp folder. I've got a programs files folder. I've got program data. All of these are something you should not touch. If you're rooting around in the root directory, you're in the wrong place, folk. Get out of there. Don't touch anything. Okay, because if you make one of these root directories uh, folders go away, um, you can make your computer stop working. Just like that. Okay, so don't, don't touch them in the root directory. The only place that I would say that you can go is here to the user folder. And in the user folder, you see all of the, you see where all of the, um, the owners of the computer might reside. Now, when I set this computer up, I set it up as the main folder was owner. And under owner is me. Okay? Um, but I can set up another one that says user number two or user number three. Okay, and they will be listed here as users of the computer. They will have their own directory for their own stuff. Okay, so I can open up owner and there is all of the owner's stuff belonging to me, Bob Williams. Okay, um, if I go back and I just say, well, okay, uh, here's another folder called public, okay? Uh, the public folder is a place where you can store documents that other computers on your network can see it. And you can move those documents back and forth from one public folder to another on your network, okay? So if you have two computers and each one can see the other computer's public folder, and there's stuff in there, you can move it from that computer to the one you're sitting at. Okay? Windows 10 makes it really, really easy. Windows 7, uh, Windows 7 and Vista is a complete pain in the, to, to make it work right. You can mess with those without interfering with the operating yes, system? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, these, these public folders have nothing to do with the operating system. Um, let me, yeah, and you bring up a good point. Um, let me go back here to the, to the main root directory. Um, a good deal of what goes on in a user folder has to do with how the computer talks to the root directory in Windows anyway. Okay? And so the user folders are intimately involved with the, what's in the root directory, uh, particularly the program files. So if you click in there, into the program files, you'll see where there's all kinds of programs in there that have been loaded onto the computer. For instance, iTunes. Okay, there it is right there. But um, this iTunes folder is also referring back to an iTunes folder inside of the user directory. Okay, the two of them have to work together. That's not the case with other operating systems that are not Windows. Um, and this is where Windows had its original problems way, 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 way back when. When the operating system was, was uh, conceived of and built as every folder has to refer to every other folder that the user may, may have. Um, that made a problem where um, the computer has to completely trust the user not to mess up these folders. The computer has to completely trust you. And in the case of Windows, it does. It completely trusts who it sees is using it. Is it the user? 
is it the internet? It completely trusts who's manipulating its folders. And in that case, something on the internet can look at your computer and say, I want to make a change here. And the computer will say, I trust you. I trust you. I love you. Do whatever you want to me. And it does. Do whatever you want to me. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> it doesn't ask permission. It just does it. And that's where your malware and your spyware and your scumware come from. You go to a website and the website says to your computer, I want to put this stuff on here for you. You'll like it. And the computer says, help yourself. I'm here. Does our malware and our antivirus and everything protect us a bit by saying uh, It does a little bit. A little bit. It might give you some indication that something's about to happen. But usually by that time, it's too late. So, so uh, in this instance, your, your, uh, your computer is trusting you and it's trusting whatever is connected to it. In the case of um, an Apple computer or a, or a Linux computer, which is roughly the same operating system, it doesn't trust you in the least. No. If you want to make a change to me, I'm going to make sure you, you are who you say you are. And I'm going to demand that you enter your administrator password. And if you don't know it, I ain't doing it. Because you ain't you. It's a simple little trick. Um, Windows tried to make this happen to some degree with the user account controls. But still, they're easily defeated. Um, so... There you go. That's, that's a little side bit on, uh, on how your computer is set up in the root directory. But let's get back to um, what's in the user folders. And we'll go back to the user and to the owner, which is me. And uh, I'm going to have a look inside of... Um, my pictures. I got lots of them in here, so, so that's why I chose this, to be able to move stuff around to show you how it's done um, with a mouse, with your keyboard. There are several different ways to do it. Now, one of the first things that you want to, to look at is what kind of view do you have of the Explorer folder? In this case, I have an icons view. It's showing me icons of what's there. But I can change that view, and if you have lots of stuff, um, what you want to change this view to um, is details. So you'll see that it changed from icons view to details view, where the details are the name of the folder, when it was created, and that it's a folder. And in this case, the desktop any is, is just an, uh, a, a, um, an information file about the desktop. Um, but it shows you all other um, files that you have in there. I'll just click on one and open it. Okay, and it shows you that uh, in this case, we've gone back to the icon view. But I can just very simply... Um, go back to the view and say give me a list and there is the full name and in, because I um, asked the computer to give it to me it also gives me um, the .jpg uh, or .exe or whatever uh, that the file is made up of. If I go back to an extra large icon I don't want to know you. Sorry. Sorry. 
Uh, sorry about that. Um, it goes back to an extra large icon. It shows me what, what that file is all about. It also shows me the, the proper name. Um, now, there are two ways, or three ways really, to start manipulating files inside of folders. You have to do a little bit of prep work in your own head before you can start making these movements of files to different folders. And so let's have, go back here to a, another quick look of the pictures folder that I have here. And let us just say that I want to move some pictures to, um, to a place where I can have a copy of them to manipulate them in another program. Okay, so I'm going to make a new folder here. A new folder called copies. And there it is, copies. And if we open it up, we'll see that it's empty. Okay, that's great. I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to open a new Explorer window. Okay? To do that, you can simply click on your, uh, your name. Um, and you open up a new Explorer window. And I'm going to go back to where I was here uh, in my pictures. Okay? Now, we'll see that we have two Explorer windows open. Here's the one in the front, here's the one in the back, here's the one that says pictures copies, and the one in the back says uh, pictures, and 2013-03, these two pictures right here, okay? So I have two Explorer windows open. Now, why did they do that? To be able to easily get at both of them. To easily get at both of them. Because what I want to do is I want to copy these two pictures to that copies folder that I'm going to play with later. Okay, there, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is to just simply take your mouse hold down the left mouse button and surround the items with your mouse and it highlights them in blue okay and then you can right click on any item in it and copy it and then go to the folder you want to go to in this case pictures copies right click and paste and so it's pasted a copy of these two pictures into this new folder where I'm going to play with them. The reason I did that is I don't want to mess up these two pictures that are the originals. I don't want to mess them up, so, so I'm going to make copies. Don't cut and paste. Cut and paste is... Um, for want of a better word, destructive. It's destroying what's in the, in the original folder and trying to move it to the new folder so it destroys what's there. If the computer makes a mistake, you've destroyed it. It's destructive. So the best way to go is to make a copy first until you're absolutely sure that the, um, that the files that you have moved are correct and working, okay? Don't do that destructive thing first. Do the non-destructive thing first. Then, once these are working and, and you have them exactly the way you want them, you can then go back here and destroy these. You can delete them, okay? Because you've got what you want over here. But Cut and paste is a way to destroy something. It destroys its old location to put it in the new, but if something goes wrong while you're doing that, you've destroyed what you have. Okay, and it may be unrecoverable. 
maybe. But Windows is really good about making things unrecoverable. It tries its best, but in some cases, <clears throat> it does bad things. All right, so here we do. We have uh, these files moved over to the new place where we can now manipulate them in a program and still have the old original copies. Now, this can be held true for pictures, for documents, for anything your uh, pro programs, anything your little heart desires to move around. Okay, anything can be done in this manner. Um, and the reason why you would do it, as I said before, you want to manipulate these files to the way you want them. You're going to open up your pictures, uh, your pictures in a program and fix them up. Uh, maybe they're too dark, maybe they're blown out with too much light, uh, red eye fixes and all of those things. You can do that with pictures, uh, documents you'd open up with your document making program and, um, and manipulate the document, add something to it, take something away, send it to somebody else. Those are the reasons that you would do that kind of thing. Um, now, what we're looking at here is Windows 10 and this is a little more elaborate than Windows 7 and a lot more elaborate than Windows XP. But um, the basics of what you want to do are still there. Um, you want to be able to um, cut something, copy something, copy path. Uh, you want to be able to paste a shortcut paste something, okay, there's your paste item. You want to delete it, you want to rename it. They're all there. Um, in, you may have to look at and play with the, the Windows Explorer panel to find the things you want to do, but once you've found them, you know, well, you know what to do with them, right? Um, and so, all of the things that you need to do to a file are there. The other way to find these things is to, our old friend, right click. The contextual menu. That's the name for it, but it's our old friend, right click. If you look, all of the things that you want to do to that file, they're up here and they're in the contextual menu. Okay, and even some things for, uh, um, in the case of this picture, um, it's going to say, well, rotate the picture 90 degrees. It won't say that for a document. It's, you know, you're not going to rotate your document 90 degrees, so that, that won't be there. But in this context of a picture, the contextual menu says you can do that. Right click is your buddy, your friend, and it can tell you many, many things about your files and your computer. Um, now, so that's moving files around from one place to another. Does anybody want me to go through this moving it around again? Just to make sure we have it. Okay? No? All right. If you click and drag, you're physically moving it. The original's not in the same place anymore, right? If I'm clicking to... Click and drag. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yes, that's another way of doing this. Uh, I'm going to highlight these two pictures here, and I'll just click on delete. And let's go back to this, and you're right, um, to highlight and drag, yeah. okay, is usually to copy. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these two and then I'll just click on one of them and drag them both over here and move two. So it did. It moved uh, these, it actually did a cut and paste. Okay, which like we said before, maybe not the best idea. Okay, um, so I am going to right click on these 
and copy them and I'm going to put them back as they where they were with a copy paste back into their original position just in case these are nice pictures I don't want to lose them I want to be able to manipulate them with my software and make them a little better and send them to my friends okay now that's um, that's how to manipulate in uh, with a mouse okay the other way to do this as we've said before is to do it with the keyboard okay so here again you want to highlight with the mouse now you can you can do this with the keyboard by holding down the control key in the active window the active window is always the one in front by holding down the control key control a control all it highlighted everything there yeah if there was a hundred there it would get them all um, now that they are completely highlighted you can still use the con the without the mouse you can use the keyboard and do control C now you'll see nothing happened or apparently nothing happened but with control C it copied these two pictures to clipboard okay so now you can make a new active window and you can do control V and what it wants to do is it wants to place these two these two copied files into the new location now it's at, it's telling me that they're already there do you want to replace them you want to skip it you want to cancel what do you want to do they're already there so uh, I'm going to say skip these files so there you go the keyboard shortcut and you may find that um, it's a whole lot easier to do th these things with the keyboard than it is to do them with the mouse just for the sake of argument I'm going to do this once again and this time I'm going to go through the whole process again so in here we are in um, our explorer window my name pictures and the folder uh, where these two pictures reside so I will do control A highlighted both of the files now to get to the or by the way I, now I have to do control C control X is cut but we're not doing control X we're going to do control C control C I've copied them now I want to get them to the full the, into the folder I want. I know it's I've got it open somewhere. If I do an Alt Tab, it's going to find the next folder. I did an Alt Tab. I didn't have to go to my mouse to get it. Alt Tab got me the got me the next window open, and I can do now. Uh, control V and there they are so I did the whole operation with the keyboard didn't have to use the mouse one bit and when you get used to this you'll find it is much faster to use the keyboard shortcuts than to start messing around with your mouse trying to get to one window to the next and one file to the next and blah 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 once you've figured out how to use those keyboard shortcuts, snap, 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 snap. You can go through 20 or 30 files and operations in a matter of seconds. Okay. Those copies up there, can you just do Control P for print and do that? Print, right, print them and from, without having to go through um, mouse? And, you can't use the mouse. <sighs> <laughs> let me uh, let me try something here okay if I right click if I right click 
on these two highlighted uh, items here, I can do a print. But you'll notice that um, there's nothing next to the print to say there's a shortcut for this. If there was a shortcut for it, that shortcut would be there um, as um, would be there to give you the indication that you can do it. Is that one when I open those things and it says control and a number? And yeah, exactly so. Oh, I have to wonder what that Yeah, those, those, are, uh, those are prompts to do it with keyboard shortcut keys. All right? Imagine that. They're prompts to do it with keyboard shortcut keys. So uh, in this case, you can't, you can't print. Um, you have to right click to do it. And what that will do is it, it won't print them directly. It will open up another program which you will print from. All right? Okay. Now that's one way to, to get at the Windows Explorer window is through your, um, your owner folder, okay? So, yes? So I don't have that on my screen or the user icon. Okay, here you go, here's another way. On your screen, you will have the taskbar, okay? And if you look carefully down here, you do have uh, an icon that looks like um, a folder. And if you hover over it, it does say Explorer, okay? If you click on that, it is another way to get to Windows Explorer, but it does it in a slightly different way. Now, this is called the library folder down here. This is your user folder, but this is the library folder. It's okay to use the library folder to navigate to things, to navigate to files and folders on your computer. It's okay to use it to navigate. But please do not use it to, in fact, place items in folders or place folders in your Explorer window. The reason I say that is that Windows is slightly crippled. Us techies know this, but Windows is slightly crippled in its copy function. Sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. And the sometimes it doesn't is when you're using the library folder. It may not put the stuff in there the way you want it to. There's something wrong with, with the way that works. There's nothing wrong with the way that your user folders work. Only the library folders. But the library folder is another way to get the stuff. Okay, so if you open up the library folder, you, you will see here on the left, there's this PC. Uh, in my case, I have OneDrive active. Uh, it's showing me um, that I have uh, something also here, um, an E drive, which there's nothing in. Uh, it's showing me the last few places I've been, okay? Downloads, desktop documents, it's all there. Um, and so I can use this to, again, get at the folders that I want on this PC, okay? And I can go to the local disk, the root directory. I can also get at the DVD player, okay? This is the only place where you can get at the DVD player. You can't get at it from your user folder, okay? So if you've put a DVD in there and you want to play the music and it hasn't come up right away, okay, the only way to get at it is to go to the root directory and get at it from here. The DVD player, the DVD burner. Okay, and this, this is a burner, by the way. So you have uh, programs on your computer to help you uh, burn files to disk. Okay, this is the only way to get at it. 
Now, the other thing that it's telling me here is that I have three devices hooked into this computer. I have my root directory, I have my DVD player, and lo and behold, here's my phone. Okay, if I click on it, it should open up the file directory of my phone. Internal storage. Yep, and it does. Okay, and by the way, if I took a picture with my phone, uh, it will be in DCIM. It will be in camera. And there are the pictures that I've taken with my phone. So I can move the picture from my phone to my computer. Okay? Isn't that cool? Are they permanent now then? Oh, if if I want them on my computer, I have to now copy them and then move them onto uh, my computer in a folder that I would create for them. Okay. Um, the same the same thing holds true uh, for your camera. Okay. When you plug your camera into your computer with with its USB cable. Same thing happens. The computer will see the camera. You don't have to use the software that came with your camera. The computer will see it. And you can navigate to the camera like you would any other drive and go looking for your pictures. Copy them off your camera, onto your computer, disconnect your camera, and then delete the pictures. Do not. Do not delete pictures using your computer. Don't delete them from your camera using your computer. Use the camera. The reason that you do that is that when you delete pictures um, from any drive with a computer, it puts a copy of recycle bin, a copy of recycle bin onto that drive. The more you delete, the bigger the bin gets. Because all of those pictures are in recycle. So if you've got an 8 gigabyte drive or card, and you delete 7 gigs of pictures, you've only got 1 gigabyte left to take pictures. If you do that through the computer because the computer has made a recycle bin that's 7 gigs big. Everybody get that math? Okay, it's a lot of toing and froing and adding and subtracting, but the basic part of it is, is that if you use your computer to manipulate other drives, particularly to delete stuff, the computer will make a recycle bin on that drive, exactly the size of the stuff you've deleted. Okay, so there we go. There's my, there's my uh, Nexus 4 telephone. Um, and there's lots of things that we can do here. Um, and I'm not going to go in here too much. No, there's nothing in documents that I've downloaded. So I'm not going to fiddle around in there too much because if I fiddle around in there, I can destroy this phone. Be careful. Um, any questions so far? Has anything gone whoosh? It's a lot of information in this session. It is. <laughs> but what should be the takeaways? Yeah, be your question. Maybe I go back to, I need a user icon on my screen. On your desktop? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get it. Okay. It sounds like, well, that's what I need. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to get it. Um, I believe in Windows 7, you have Windows 7? No, I'm up to 10 now. You're up to 10? Okay. You're going to right click anywhere on the screen, and you should be able to do this through personalize. I believe. Um, okay. Under themes, 
in the personalize option under themes, you will see the desktop icon settings. If you click on that, you should see another panel come up that will show you um, check marks for computer user files. That's what you want. Your computer, your user files, your network, your recycle bin, and your control panel. Check them all. Put them all there. Especially the control panel. Yes, user files, but also the control panel. Because in Windows 10, getting to the control panel easily is not easy. But if you put it on your desktop as an icon, it's simple. Okay, so there you go. Let's, let's go through this again just so everybody gets it. In Windows 10 and in Windows 7, okay, anywhere on the desktop, right click. And then you want to click on Personalize. In Windows 10, in Windows 10, um, where do we go? Themes? Yes. Themes. In Windows 10, we go to Themes and then click on Desktop Icon Settings. In um, Windows 7, um, I believe it's right there. Desktop icons. Um, so that's how to get to those. Now, where did we want to go from here with this? Use your icon. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. check Yeah. And put the control panel in. The reason I say that, here it is right here, because in Windows 10, Windows 8, it's yeah, you can only get it through the start menu and you have to go looking for it. But if it's on your desktop, it's just a double click to open. Okay. Now, um, Windows 10 and Windows 8, um, yes, you have all of these functions here of the control panel, but they are in these big screens that you have to go rooting through to get what you want. And you have to know where it is. If control panel is there, just simply go to control panel to get what you want to manipulate your computer the way you need it manipulated. Let's, let's say that you need to manipulate um, the, uh, the, the time on your computer. The, the, uh, the time is wrong, okay? It's out by five hours, okay? You can try and do it through this. Oops. Through here. Or you can make it really, really simple and go to the control panel and change the time and date here. It's a, it's a lot simpler to, to look at and to use. It's, it's a little more uh, user friendly. And that's what control panel is. It's more user friendly. Um, okay, uh, and by the way, control panel is, uh, is just another look at um, the Windows Explorer window. It's just another way of looking at it. It's another set of things that an Explorer window is. Yes? I'm still stuck in my math world, but if I ever get PC literate, this Cantana person, can, could, can you not ask her to take you to the control panel, or is that a very naive question? Does she only find stuff on the internet for you? Oh, um... Is that the right word? Cantana? Is that the Cortana? Word? Cortana, sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't have um, Cortana activated here, uh, but I think uh, I think you can. I think if, if Cortana is activated uh, with a microphone, I think you can say open control panel and it that's should do it. That's what I thought. But yeah, I, I mean, it should do it. Yeah, uh, Cor I, I, Cortana is not something I've played with a lot. I know it's there, but all of these, um, these virtual assistants, which is um, Siri, Cortana, uh, in Android, there are a couple of them, virtual assistants that you talk to your phone or you talk to your tablet and it's supposed to do stuff for you and it's supposed to tell you things. 
They don't work very well. <laughs> Maybe in a year's time or two, they will. But now they don't. You can talk to Google. Yes, no, you can talk. Yeah. Yeah, but what's wrong with doing it? Making this head do it instead of some virtual voice. I mean, you, me, I want to do it. I want to look it up something. Make my head work. That's how you learn. The the whole idea, yeah, the 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 whole idea behind these virtual assistants was um, to do all of these things in natural language. Okay. Now, right now, when you go to Google and you want to search for something. You have to do a little bit of thinking about what you're going to type into that search bar window. Okay. But what these virtual assistants are trying to do is to help you find what you want with natural language. Okay. And natural language is a really, really difficult problem for a computer. It's really difficult because. For instance, um, you can type in to a Google search bar, find me the blues. Okay? And Google will find you music about the blues. But if you do that in natural language, um, it may give you. Um, Entries about postpartum syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you see how difficult it is to to use natural language that way. So it, it's coming. They're working on it, but that's the holy grail of to be able to search with natural language to have the computer understand what you mean. To say, I got the blues, help me out. <laughs> and your computer um, might give you an entry, well, uh, you can get Prozac here. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you, you can get Prozac here. I've got the blues is also a musical tune. Okay? So de depending on how your computer views you at the time, it should know that you're depressed or you just want to play some music. It should know that, but it's really, really difficult for a computer to do that. For us, for humans, for a two-year-old, it's really easy, but not one of these. Okay, and that, here again, that goes along with um, finding stuff on your computer um, I'm going to open um, an Explorer window again, and up here it says search quick access. Well, I've opened up the quick access window, okay, um, but I can um, type something in here, and it will start going through all of my quick access folders and saying, do you have this? Um, as for instance, I know it's there. Okay, so it's giving, I typed in the word test, it gives me uh, test.txt and test3.rtf. I know that they're there. Okay, so that's another way to find it. Um, I, if Cortana is working properly, I should be able to do that through Cortana as well. But I haven't played with it, and I don't think it works well. So um, that's another way to find things on your computer is to use your Explorer windows to find things. How quickly it does it is how quick is your computer. Yes? I did, when I was going through the control panel, I found a thing that said uh, activate Windows Defender. Yep. So I took out a VAS, went back, Activated it. How do I know if it's working? There's nothing. It should, it should be. It should be green. Is it not green? It's what green? The Windows Defender. Windows Defender. Okay. 
Do you have an icon, Windows Defender, on your... Here it is. Windows Defender. Yeah. Okay. Now, if Windows Defender is active, I, I can click on it, and it's green. Oh, I've never gone back and clicked yeah. on it. Yeah. I was wondering, did it work? <laughs> yeah. If it's red, it's not working. Oh, okay. If it's orange, it needs an update. But if it's green, you're good. Right, to take um, a vast out. Yes, yes, take a vast out. Uh, you did well. On Windows 10, is this what you're talking about? On Windows 10 for what? For Windows Defender. Yes, yeah. Uh, Windows Defender is, um, is, comes with it. It's part of Windows 10. It's part of Windows 8. Um, you have to um, do a little fiddling in Windows 7 and, and Vista to make it work, but... Yes, it's automatically there, but if you have if you have another antivirus, if you have another antivirus on the computer, Windows um, um, Defender uh, will just go to the background and say, "Okay, uh, I'll wait until you get rid of this other usurper." Yes. Where did you go to to click and see if it was green on Windows? Where was Windows Defender? Okay, what? it's in the control panel. Yeah, it's in the control panel, and it's down at the bottom here. These these are all in here by alphabetical order. Windows yeah, Defender, no okay. Sometimes it's turned off, though. Yeah, if if you have um, sometimes if you um, if you uninstall um, an antivirus that you have, Windows Defender may not turn itself on right away. Go in and check, uh, but you can turn. If it's turned off, you can turn it on, and if it doesn't turn on, it probably wants an update. Okay. Oh, there will be an entry there saying, uh, "Turn me on." Turn me on. There will be an entry for it. Yes. I would leave that alone okay. and I here's why because if you it's talking about um, uh, thumb drives and and and, uh, and USB drives and such um, there is no point in making a file history for for a thumb drive there's no point okay. if, if you uh, plug the drive in you're going to go to it and look at what's there you don't need a history for it Yes. One other thing I noticed in control panel in the security and maintenance, Bob, in the maintenance it says uh, there was a notation saying finish installing device software. One or more devices connected to your PC needs additional software. And then there's a turn off messages about device or install and it's got a shield. Nowhere does it tell me what devices. And remember I said last week I had okay. an AMD Catalyst thing and I don't want to put that well yeah okay you don't need AMD catalyst because you're not playing Far Cry um, here is uh, another window uh, Explorer window that you can use and um, in your case uh, I want you to right click on this PC and if you do that you will get um, a drop-down box where you have an entry for manage mm -hmm. and what you're managing is you're managing your entire computer okay it's going to open when you click on manage it's going to open another window which is also an, uh, a Windows Explorer window with a lot of different kinds of things in it um, but what you really are after is the device manager okay the device manager mm -hmm. if it, if your computer is giving you um, messages about devices are not there or they're not quite right, right this is where you want to go you want to go to device manager and see for yourself so you click on device manager 
and it will give you a list of all of the active devices on your computer and whether they are working or not. If they're not working, um, there will be uh, an icon beside it, maybe a little yellow triangle or an X or something. Yeah, to say it's not working. In my case, there are none, so everything is working. By the way, this whole idea up of updating drivers for devices, okay? If, if you need a, an updated driver for a device, this is where you go to do it. You don't allow a program to do it, okay? And if a device is not working, it's giving you the little yellow triangle. You can click on the device and you can right click on its device and you can say update driver software. If there is no update, it'll tell you. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that unless you really, really, really have to. Okay, uh, I'll get to it. We'll go to it one more time. You want to right click on this PC or my PC or whatever it's called, and you want to go to manage. And then in the manage panel, you can click on device manager. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any more questions? We're just about done. Any more questions? Yes. When I put in 10, I printed it and I finally found the disk. Will it work if I just run the disk through again? Uh, it might. It might. You may have to uh, get an updated driver from the. Who makes your printer? Canon? Um, I don't yeah. <laughs> HP, Canon. No. HP, Canon, one. Um, Lexus, okay. Yeah, there, there's probably updated drivers for your printer. So just quickly, I'm going to show you how to find um, drivers for your printer. So um, we'll go to the internet just quickly here. And uh, I'm just going to go to Google. And in your case, you're going to do um, Le Lexus, L -E yeah, Lexus, um, the, the model number of your printer, okay, it's right on the front there. You put the model number in, and then the word driver, okay. all right? And it should give you a list of places you can go and get drivers for your Lexus printer, make sure you are going to a Lexus website. It will say Lexus.com driver, your printer, but if it says driver guide or something like that, don't go there. You must go to the website. And if there is an updated driver, you can download it and install it and your printer will start working again. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'm a phone call away. Okay, that's it for today, folk. Um, I think uh, I may not have uh, the video done today, but tomorrow for sure. And so thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.